We are back with the Premier's League, former Premier of BC, Christy Clark, and former Premier of Nova Scotia, Daryl Dexter. Uh, it seems as if the Premiers have agreed, at least at this point, to start to ease interprovincial trade barriers on booze. Uh, Ms. Clark, we'll start with you. Is this a big deal? No. It's <laughs> Why a, not? It's, it's ridiculous. We are in the midst of a trade war that could thrust Canada back into recession. You wipe out every job gain that this country has made in the last few years. And at the same time, we can't trade with one another. Now, in BC and in Saskatchewan, um, we dropped all barriers to wine, for example. And I think what the provinces should do, in British Columbia, say, in Ontario, where we have liquor boards, we're the, some of the biggest buyers of liquor anywhere in the world, bulk buyers, we should stop buying American liquor. But you can't do that unless you have free trade within Canada because Ontario wine will need a market in British Columbia. British Columbia will need a, uh, a market in Ontario. And it's just an easy example of why free trade within this country we, it's so important. We are defeating ourselves and we are do the, the province's inability to agree uh, to drop trade barriers amongst us, especially when it is so urgent, is Donald Trump's greatest weapon in this trade war against us. Mr. Dexter, to you, why, why is it, from your perspective, so difficult to clear some of these barriers on domestic trade? Well, first of all, I agree with, uh, I agree with Christy. This is not a big deal. Um, uh, it, it's, it was ironic to me that it was being held in New Brunswick, which is one of the most protectionist provinces uh, in, the, in, the, in the country. Um, it, it's difficult because the way that this works is it becomes, it becomes a kind of lowest common denominator. You can, you can only move as far as the most protectionist province is, is willing to move. And so that makes it very difficult to make any kind of real progress. You do see progress, as, as Christy mentioned. You do see it kind of regionally. We, we try to do a number of different things with Newfoundland and, and uh, you know, trying to break down some of those barriers. But it's extraordinarily incremental. And I, I think if you're going to have any real progress on this, um, then it's going to take um, some, some really significant work. Um, uh, for example, I think there would have to be, you know, some kind of a, a, a major adjustment fund that would have to be put in place so that provinces who believed somehow that they were going to lose on these kinds of negotiations would have a financial incentive to actually uh, go ahead and allow the, these, um, these barriers to be dropped. I, I don't, I really don't, uh, unfortunately, uh, and, I, and I really it, it is a very unfortunate thing, but I do not believe that we'll see that in the near future. Uh, one of the frustrations that I had was I couldn't even get Nova Scotia milk into New Brunswick, yeah. and if you can't do something yeah. that simple. Uh, now, the Prime Minister's office has said there's going to be a first minister's meeting in the fall, and there are major tr trade issues at play, as you both mentioned, with the United States. Uh, and there will be a deadline. At the same time, there's going to be this deadline uh, passed on proposing carbon plans. How is this meeting sort of... How are the tensions going to be in this meeting? We'll start with you, Mr. Dexter. Well, you mean with respect to the with the U.S. trade? No, with respect to uh, these are the first ministers heading into Ottawa. They're dealing with uh, the consequences of a trade dispute with the United States in their own provinces, and then they're right. going into this meeting and they're they're going to be meeting with the prime minister when they've got this carbon pricing issue hanging over their heads. What is that tension like? Oh, um, I, I think any time uh, you get in the room with the prime minister, I, and I and I I think this is. In, uh, in the majority of a problem for the prime minister because you tend to be kind of outgun 13 to 1 uh, when you're in the room with all of the all of the all of the premiers so it is a um, it is a forum that is uh, I think uh, tilted slightly toward uh, the, the premiers in that uh, in that kind of an environment uh, but I think on on all of those issues including the trade issue there's you're going to see the same kinds of questions being raised um, you know, on, on intergovernmental trade, for example, uh, if, if they're trying, to, if the federal government is trying to push the provinces on that, um, you know, questions will come up the same as they come up between Canada and the United States. What does a dispute mechanism, uh, a dispute settlement mechanism actually look like? You know, who's going to have access to it? Is it just governments or is it government uh, and businesses? You know, all of those same kinds of things. 
that operate between Canada and the United States, you'll actually see uh, as questions that will arise between uh, the provinces, uh, even if the even if the federal government is is pushing them to do something. Now, this is the last question. Uh, back to you, Ms. Clark, and uh, we have one minute left here. Uh, we have to note before we go, there was just one female premier at this year's yeah, meeting. Yeah. Uh, what happened to the days where there were six female provincial and territorial leader, me, leaders at this meeting? Ms. Clark, what's your perspective on that? Well, I, you know, my perspective is this. Very tough for women in politics and in business to get to the very top and be able to stay there because they're, and this is, the media shares this problem as much as members of the public. When women are nice, people like us, but they don't think we're competent. When we work hard and we get stuff done and we're tough, they don't think we're nice anymore. And so it's a standard that is not applied to men. Men don't have to be nice if they're competent, and men don't have to be uh, competent if they're nice. It's a double standard. Women have real trouble winning in that environment, and um, that's, I think, part of what's happened to, uh, to the face of, of women. In the, but you know what? Sometimes governments just run out of their runway and... Um, I think that happened in Ontario, and I think in British Columbia, we were in government for 16 years. I think people also just wanted to change. So it's a little bit of both, but I think on that first issue, if we can address that as a society, it won't just be good for women politicians, it will be good for women in the corporate boardroom, it will be good for women on the, on the foundry floor, it will be good for women in car manufacturing, and good for women in accounting. We need to address that problem and that double standard in our society. Both premiers, I want to thank you for joining us in our Premier's League. Christy Clark and Daryl Dexter, 